I've told you before that one of the things in these parables that has always gripped me is how when the master in the second parable comes back and rewards the first two servants for their investment in the kingdom, the third servant, who remember buried his talent, just buried his money and he just gave it back to the master. The master refers to him as wicked. And the question I ask is, well, what wicked thing had he done? Right? Well, there's no immorality in there. He, he didn't take the money and blow it on prostitutes or gambling or embezzle it or anything like that. He, he gave it back. He gave back 100% of everything that had been given to him. And Jesus calls him wicked. What wicked thing had he done? And here's my conclusion, I've told you. There's more than one way to be wicked in the kingdom of God. You can be wicked through an egregious violation of the Ten Commandments. Yep, you can go out and be immoral, and that would classify you as wicked. But you can also be wicked by simply failing to leverage and invest what God has given you for his kingdom for the purposes for which he gave it to you. The first, the first breaking the Ten Commandments, we would call that becoming wicked by the sins of commission. The second one, not leveraging your life and using it for the kingdom, would be becoming wicked by the sin of omission. Oh, 